I'm happy to be able to share something about the Eucharist because it is very meaningful to me in my own life. What I share comes from my heart. Kayla asked me to share for about 15 to 17 minutes. That is what I will do. I promise you I will hold it to that. And then you'll have some time to talk a little bit together. Let me just ask, how many of you remember your first communion? Think to yourself, is there one word that describes something to you that stands out from that day? Just one word. And let's hear some of those words. Just say them out. <coughs> say it loud so we can all hear. White. White. White, absolutely. Anything else? Yes? Okay. Clumsy. I dropped the Eucharist. Oh. <laughs> describes what I remember is song or music because I was six years old in first grade and we were taught a song and I remember exactly the song that we sang now it's the words are simple but profound Jesus for you I live Jesus for you I die Jesus I am yours in life and in death I would sing it, but I'm at the end of a cold, so anyway, I won't croak up here. But I think it's profound, you know, because <coughs> Eucharist is about life, and it's about Jesus with us in our living and in our dying. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus says some really startling things. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. And he says, everybody who believes has eternal life. These are really powerful statements. And I hope we'll open them up a little bit this evening. Eucharist is about Jesus' gift of his own body and life blood. But it's about our body and blood, too. We need to look at what happens earlier in John 6, before Jesus says these things. Jesus is found on a hillside where a large crowd has come to be with him. And he expresses concern to his friends that the people are hungry and need to be fed. One account in the Gospels says, his heart was moved with pity. Philip, the practical one of the disciples, says there's no way we can feed all these people. However, he says, there is a child who has five loaves and two fish, but that will never be enough for this crowd. And Jesus says simply, make people sit down. It's as though Jesus says, sit down, calm yourselves, and we will find a way together to do something about the hunger of these people. In Matthew's Gospel, when the disciples say, we'll never have enough food to feed these people, Jesus says, give them something to eat yourselves. What do you have to offer, he says. And so they bring the five loaves and two fish. Jesus takes them, blesses them, and gives them back to the disciples. 
to distribute. And we know what happens. There is enough. Not only is there enough, there's more than enough. Twelve baskets left over. Jesus takes what we have and what we are, blesses it, and transforms it, and makes us able to help satisfy the hungers of others. In Eucharist, we become so grateful for what we have received that we can say, yes, one with the body of Christ, I will share with others. In Eucharist, we bring our human longing and hunger and gather as community at the table of the Lord, where we are nourished by the Lord. Jesus uses human signs and symbols to say something about the deeper realities <coughs> of life. Sacraments are like windows through which we see and experience the deeper reality at work in our world, God's presence with us. But we have to have faith to see that, to see through those windows. So Jesus uses water to show our rebirth in baptism, oil to show anointing in confirmation, and the sacrament of the sick. And the great nourishing gifts of bread and wine are used for the sacrament of Eucharist. When these are brought to the altar at the offertory of the Mass, they represent us, the stuff of our lives, all that we have, and all that we hunger for. The bread and wine that are brought to the altar rep represent our longing for life, love, well-being, fulfillment, self-worth, and so on. In Eucharist, we are nourished by His body and blood so that, like him, we will be moved with pity for the crowds around us, so that we, too, will pour out our love to those in our lives. Jesus is the one called God with us. You remember at Christmas, you hear, he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. He meets us on the road of our daily life struggles. He has already taken into his own being our hungers, struggles, thirsts, life experiences. And he has shown us that in him, and joined to a community that breaks bread together, we can have a life that never ends. On our own, we know it is so difficult. With him and with the Eucharistic community, everything is possible. The words of the Eucharist were spoken by Jesus in the context of a solemn Jewish meal, a Passover Seder. It was a meal of thanksgiving. The name we use is Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. We give thanks and we respond to the invitation to eat and drink. 
but it's also an invitation to participate in Jesus reaching out and service to others. It's interesting to note that the author of John's Gospel makes this point of service very clear. In John's Gospel, the words of the consecration at the Last Supper are not there. They're in the other Gospels, we know them. But in John's Gospel, the words, this is my body, this is my blood, are not recorded. Instead, John focuses on the washing of the feet at the Last Supper. I give you an example, John tells us, Jesus said, so that you may do what I have done. It's important to remember that in Eucharist, when Jesus says, do this in memory of me, it doesn't only mean eat and drink in my name. It's also live as I have lived and be willing to die as I have died. 